down. So this is first case. Let us have a second case. So what is second case I said? Second case is plane perpendicular to HP and parallel to BP. Okay, now let us consider one more line. Let us consider I will consider hexagonal line. Okay. Now if you want to go to this case, plane is perpendicular to HP. So that means that it should be like this. And it is parallel to BP. Okay, again, in this particular case, I can say that this particular lamina, I can hold it like this. So that it is perpendicular to HP and parallel to VP. Since it is parallel to VP, true shape and size will be seen in front view. Now since I can see true shape and size in the front view, I need to start from front view. How do I start the front view? Remember again, we know that if I want to or we know that in the front view, we know only HP details. That means say that I need to say this one of the sides, whether this particular one of the sides is parallel to HP or I can hold it like this. Nah. If you hold it like this because what this particular side is perpendicular to HP or I can hold it in this way or I can hold it like this also. If I hold it like this means what? A corner is touching HP. Okay. Not only that, since this particular lamina is parallel to VP, either it can be in front of VP or it can be in VP. That will say that your front view will not matter. Why your front view will not matter? Because if I look from the front, I cannot see how much it is from VP and the. If I want to see that, where I should see? I should view from the top. So, if I view from the front, I cannot make out whether this particular lamina either is in front or in VP. But anyway, in the front view, I see the true shape. Okay, now let us do a problem wherein I am just going to consider an hexagonal lamina. Okay, so I will draw this x1 line as usual. Now, let us say we have an hexagonal lamina. I will just indicate. Let us say hexagonal lamina of uh, 50 mm sign which is perpendicular to HP and parallel to VP then I will say one of the corners is in HP then I will say draw the projections. Okay. So how do you start? Anyway, we know that since the lamina is parallel to VP, the true shape and size will be seen in front view. I need to start from front view. Okay. Now that means that I need to draw, I mean I start from front view. Okay. Now as I was again I was going to explain, since it is parallel to VP, it I can uh, orient in any fashion. Still, it will be parallel to VP only. But it is given that what are the corners in HP? So, I need to hold it in this way only. So, since one of the corners is in HP means, see this particular corner, even if I hold it like this, it is corner is touching. I can also hold it like this. So, what is the difference here? If I hold it like this means that two adjacent sides make equal inclinations. But if I hold it like this, the two adjacent sides will not make equal inclinations. That would say that you can draw this particular figure in any fashion. But I want all of you to draw a particular solution. Because anyway I wanted that this particular corner should touch on HP. But if I want to have the same solution with all the students then I need to see that whenever we say resting on a corner I will assume that the two adjacent sides make equal inclinations so that I am going to get a unique solution. Okay. Now since I want to do in this way, what about the side now? Since a corner is touching and also make equal inclinations, what about this particular side? So these two opposite sides will be perpendicular to HP so that I need to draw in that way. Because if I hold it like this, what will happen as I said? If it is making 
unequal inclinations, then even though they are parallel to one another, these particular two opposite sides will not be perpendicular to HP. Okay, anyway, I want all of you to draw a unique solution. So, whenever, again I am repeating, whenever I say corner is in HP, means always consider the two adjacent sides will make equal inclinations. Okay, now anyway, I need to draw the hexagon such that two sides should be perpendicular. But anyway, I am just going to illustrate how to draw the hexagon. Because hexagon, as you can see in the previous problem, because anyway, it is a pentagon. So, I said that for a pentagon, the included angle was 108 because 360 divided by 5. Now here, how many sides you have? We have 6 sides. Now since we have 6 sides, what about the included angle for all the, for all the sides? It should be 120, 120, 120. So that your exterior angle is 60 degrees. So I can use the same method. What is the same method I said? I will first draw one of the sides, then I will take this included angle as 120. Okay, but anyway, I want you to still use a simple method to draw this particular hexagon. Okay, now let me explain how to draw the hexagon by circle method. Okay, I am just going to give a very simple uh, procedure. Okay, now anyway, let us say I want you to draw the side to be 50 mm. Now, since I have given side to 50 mm, first what you do is you take 50 mm radius and draw a circle. Okay, so I am just going to draw a circle of TMM. So that is the first step. So draw the circle of 50 mm. So this side is as a 50 because it is like a 50. Now, depending upon a particular side, whether I want this particular side to be perpendicular or whether I wanted to get that particular side to be horizontal or I wanted one of the side to be Inclined, I need to step off the distance. I need to step off the distances. Okay, now let us say I will just anyway. This is my reference line. Let us consider like this. Now, if I anyway I said that 50 mm is the side, so then what you do is you take the same 50 mm and draw an arc again from here also. Draw an arc similarly here. Draw an arc, draw an arc so that I am going to get the x like this. So don't you feel it is so simple to draw the hexagon? But here you observe, since in this particular case I got two sides parallel to one another, which is horizontal lines. Okay, so now we can see that if I want to get a but two pairs, two, two pair of the sides to be horizontal, step off the distances from the horizontal diameter. Is it clear? Now let us say that I want to have these uh, two parallel sides to be or two parallel opposite sides to be vertical then what do you do then so i need to step off from step off from where again let me draw this let us say this is my horizontal uh, diameter and the vertical diameter okay tell me now anyway as you can see in this particular case to get opposite uh, pair of sides to be horizontal we have started stepping off that uh, 50 mm sides from the horizontal diameter here what I will do then if I want to do that the procedure instead of stepping it off from horizontal diameter I am going to step it off from the vertical diameter so here I will start from I will just take it here here I will take here also I will take from here and here also I will take this distance. So once you do that, what will happen? Anyway, I am going to step off from here now. So I am going to get like this, like this. Here also from here, I am stepping it off somewhere here and stepping it off from vertical diameter somewhere here. Is it clear? Now as you can see, if I step off from the vertical diameter, I am going to get this particular hexagon such that two pair of opposite sides are vertical. Now the same analogy, let us say I wanted to have one of that sides to be inclined at 30 degrees. Then what do you do? If I want to have 30 degree opposite sides, then I will draw first a line here. Let us say 
that is I am going to consider this diameter at 30 degrees. From here I am going to step off the distances. Is it clear? Let us consider this uh, second uh, case uh, 1 B second case that is plane perpendicular to HP and parallel to BP. Okay, now let us consider this problem. Let us say we have an hexagonal lamina of 50 mm side which is perpendicular to HP and parallel to BP. So, by just reading this statement, we can conclude that the lamina is parallel to VP. Since the lamina is parallel to VP, I need to start from front view. So, I will start from front view. Okay, now once I decided I should start from front view, now I should decide the orientation. Regarding orientation, you can just read the problem. It is given that one of the corners is in HP. Okay, so since a corner is in HP, what about the two sides which will pass through that particular corner? That will make equal inclinations. Now, since those two make equal inclinations, what about the other two sides? Other than those two corner sides, they are perpendicular. So, we can see that I want to draw that hexagon such that two sides should be vertical. Anyway, let us do this problem by, I mean, let us draw this hexagon by circle method. So, okay, tell me what the circle method I was just now telling you. So, I will draw the x, y line. But anyway, don't draw x, y line first. First, draw the hexagon. I will tell you why it is not required initially. Okay. Let us say first I will draw the x. So since it is given that the x will have to 50 mm side, first I will draw this circle of 50 mm diameter. Okay. Then I will draw this horizontal diameter and vertical diameter. Remember, these are all construction lines. Construction lines has to be as light as possible. Now, anyway, since I wanted one of the corners to be in HP, since the corner to be in HP, these two corners will equal inclinations now. So, what about these two sides? The other two sides, apart from these two corner sides, has to be vertical. Now, since they are vertical, so how do you step off the distances? I need to step off the distances from the vertical diameter. So, with this diameter, I will take square vertical and put the same distance now. So, take this and take this. Similarly, here, take the distance and take the distance from the compass. So it is as simple as that. Now I am going to complete that. So this is the hexagon. Now we can see this hexagon of what side now? What other side I will get? It will be 50. Remember, these are all construction lines because for me it is easy because anyway I am doing it on drawing board now. So I can just erase this. I will just erase this. But uh, you need not erase, not required. Now since you are not going to erase these lines, how I want you to draw these lines? So those lines has to be as light as possible. Okay. Okay, now I just written this again. Now it is given that one of the corners is in HP. Which is that corner? I will say this corner. So since that is a corner, I will draw a line now. So what is this line now? What is this line now? X, Y line. Because if drawing X, Y line, drawing this, you may have some confusions. So first draw the X, Y then draw this X, Y Okay, now we need to name them. Again, remember, in the previous case, I told you that to get the uh, naming, where is the observer? Observer. Because anyway, finally I need to draw the top view. Okay. So now, for the observer, I need to locate the points or I need to name these corners such that first priority is for visible corners. Then for the other corners. So which is the first visible corner here? This corner. Which is the next one? This, this, like that. So remember, whenever I want to name in the front view, if that is my first figure, Always name in the leftmost visible point in the clockwise direction because I told you in the previous case that is whenever I start from the top view, if I want to name them, name from leftmost visible point in the anti clockwise direction. Here I will do it in the clockwise direction. So, which is the first point in this one? So, it will be B double dash, B double dash, C double dash, D double dash. U double dash and 
you have double dash. So this is the front view. Okay, so let us start taking from the left most visible point in the clockwise direction. So this is the front view. Let us A dash, B dash, C dash, D dash, E dash and F dash. So front view is over. Now I need to draw the top view. So now we know that since the lamina is perpendicular to HP, in the top view it should be seen as a line. So where do you show that line? If nothing is mentioned, either I would have taken on VP, that is if the lamina may be in VP or in front of VP. So since if nothing is mentioned, I can just consider either on X1 and itself or below X1, but here again, and the lamina or the plane is 40 mm in front of VP. So what you do then? I will draw these projectors such that if I want to consider this particular lamina, this is the lamina, no? So this particular lamina should be what distance below x y line? It should be 40 mm in front of VP. Now naming. So see the advantage of drawing from here, no? A, B, C. So here without looking into this, I will this. A, B, C, D, E, F. See? The advantage of naming the corners in a particular fashion is without looking into this view, I can immediately do this without any errors. Let us say we start from somewhere here. Then what will happen? I need to see all the points. That is the reason. Always follow a particular format. So that will be easier for you. Okay, anyway, as you can see here, if I look from the top, I can see only ABC. D, E, F, they are exactly behind C, B as well as A. That is the reason they are in bracket. Okay, so this is my final projections for this particular case. So remember, Whenever I give this particular two cases, in one of the views, we can see the two shape. In the other view, it will be seen as a line, but that line has to be parallel to XY line. Is it okay? Thank you.